Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm here with an old friend of ours, and that old friend is none other than Kieran Gillen. Here he is. How are you doing, mate? Lovely to be here. I'm just slightly nervous about my cat. Will the cat <laughs> choose to make an entrance to this interview? We'll find out, Andrew. This is high tension. As a cat lover and owner myself, one should always be nervous about one's <laughs> cat. It is a fact. Now, mate, um, you've got lots going on at the moment. Uh, you know, I, we, I was talking, uh, our, our mutual friend, Al Jung, has been on the show a few times recently, and he also has a tremendous amount going on. And we're here to talk about one of those areas of comic book mythology where you guys often intersect. And uh, this is to talk about your upcoming book, X-Men Before the Fall, The Sinister Four. So what can you tell me about it, mate? It's like internally at the X office, we, this period between like Sins of Sinister and the Fall of X, we describe it as the cascade. So it's the kind of like, oh, no, things are getting bad. Like the, all these events kind of like circle and circle and circle. And we reach this inflection point around the gala and then everything changes. Um, so these specials were kind of our way of um, let's drill down into one of them. Like it's almost like um, it's kind of a here come the bad guys aspect as in each of, like, each of them are kind of circling around something villainous. In my case, it's the Sinister Four. And of course, we had to call it the Sinister Four because as we, as people who've read Sins of Sinister knows, oh, Sinister's lost. He's in the pit now. He's out the game. So it's like three people who are still playing, who are, you know, Orbis Stellaris, uh, Mother Righteous, and Dr. Stasis himself. Um, and this is kind of digging into them. Because what I wanted to do is, like Stasis and Mother Righteous especially, they've been around. They've been making big moves. But we don't really know them. So kind of like, this is about who they are like because you know especially obviously mother Rock just looks completely different but dr stasis looks a lot like mr sinister why is he different apart from the fact he doesn't do mutant stuff why is he different so that's kind of what we lean into so it's it's a deep dark story because um just revealed in this week's x-men but is uh by jet and jerry is that um mother righteous isn't actually a you know doesn't appear to be mr sinister he's actually rebecca who is the wife of sinister back when he was human and of course, those who really know Sinister's origin, like Sinister's became Mr. Sinister because he couldn't get over the grief of losing his wife. He cut that away from me. And now she's here walking around. Now, Sinister can't feel anything. Now, what does Dr. Stasis feel about it? So it's a really bleak, like, date issue with, like, fighting and supervillainry and plans and 150 years in the Marvel Universe. But that's what it's about. This kind of like, OK, these are the people. This is why you should care about them. And this is why you should hope they never win. That's yeah. kind of the vibe. Well said, mate. And what's your art team on the book? Uh, Paco's doing it. So my Brian just listened to this great man. Oh, Paco Medina's doing it. My, my good friend Paco, who's like he's doing. Uh, Paco's been delightful. He did um, obviously three issues in Sins of Sinister. Yes. He uh, did the did the half of the Sins of Sinister climax issue, the, the Dominion, and he's actually going over to Immortal next. So he's kind of become like the other artist on Immortal, really. And that yeah. kind of what if you talk about the larger story, and it's like it's like the fact the majority is a really dark comedy. Um, date issue there's a certain real charm to his people like you know they're they're real super villains but like we're seeing them in a quiet moment so and paco really sort of lay sort of sells that l slight likability to them and of course you know by the end of the issue that's gone but you know you get to see a moment of oh yeah they're the sort of people uh but that but we should circle a million times wonderful you know mate you're ever the narrative professional the brilliant thing that you did then whether by design or by complete accident is back neatly into the next thing I want to talk to you about, which is Sins of Sinister, which yeah. is coming out in a lovely collected edition in September. So now that you're looking back on that project, what can you tell me about it? How do you feel about it? How do you feel it was received? It was received really well. I mean, especially when it dropped, it was the kind of like, I think it was, it, it's an it's a future dark X-Men story, which we've been aware of before. But I think we kind of confounded every single expectation of it, like in terms of like, oh, right, it is not, you know, oh, no, this weirdly counts. Like, it's not it's not like the X-Men, it's not like a villain win story, but it, it, it kind of is. It's a villain wins and then it all goes wrong. So it's not like Sins of Sinister as an age of apocalypse where apocalypse destroys the earth. This is, oh, my God, my lab, my lab experiment's gone out of control. It's basically the Sorcerer's Apprentice. And so like, the whole universe is turned into like grey mulch of sinister. And that's a backdrop. So it's kind of a, a very dark comedy. It's got a, uh, it's so much about the heroes and like the, the dark sides of them. And then of course, most importantly, it all sort of segues back in. So basically all the immortal X-Men stuff out the back end is absolutely us dealing with the fallout. Um, I think like the, the weird quirkiness, like it's such, I mean, it's such a British crossover. Like with me, Alan Sy, it's probably the most 2000 yeah. ADE thing I think Marvel's ever put out. I and agree like, completely. Put, I agree. It's like it's idea, idea, idea. 
And that kind of like gleeful playfulness as in, okay, it's now 10 years in the future. Now it's a hundred years. Now it's a thousand years. Especially like my book, The Immoral X-Men has got this vibe of, um, like it starts like, it starts off quite comic. Like obviously it's dark comedy. And then can you laugh at this? And then can you laugh at this? And it's always like kind of the slowly turning the doll. It's like boiling the frog until like we're burning the units of fire. Um, so and it, was, it was really good working. I mean, I did five of the issues. Uh, everyone else did three. I did the, the bookends. But like the way we pass the narrative baton, like, you know, each person starts each different arc. Every client, if every of the three minis are readable by themselves, but every one also dovetails to the next one and hands off the baton. Like, and it's one of the things like, obviously we had some conversation early on, like, do we, how do we collect these? Like, then, oh, they said, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's one big story, one big sins of sin as a trade. I think people are going to love it. And it's like kind of, um, I think even a single volume, people appreciate it more. They'll say, oh, yeah. right, I get it. This is a, a big story uh, with a huge galactic scale. I'm really proud of it. I, I agree completely. I think it performs beautifully as a, a single creative piece. And, and the three of you have that kind of beautiful symbiosis through line between your approach. And it's so complimentary, whichever one of the three of you is writing it. I think you should be very proud of it, mate. Thank you. That's very kind. Honestly, I think everyone, Alan side did amazing work. All the artists did amazing work. The letter has fought God itself, you know. Um, yeah, especially because we did it really quickly, it feels like. So it feels like a... Um, a big burst of pulp energy and that's what I, so it's what something i love in comics is that kind of thing you know yeah. i genuinely enjoyed it a brilliant tag a brilliant tagline and words to live by a big burst of pulp energy and uh, uh, mate what we've been talking about which is the sinister four and the and the sins of sinister collection coming in september they can both be ordered from the links attached to the video below us and uh kieran it's always wonderful to see you mate i look forward to seeing you again soon uh, thanks for having me i look forward to being back Take care, brother. All the best. Bye-bye. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.